will try and answer them. Um, uh, uh, probably in another time. Right, moving swiftly on, it's time for waterways. So one of the questions I've had asked uh, on a number of occasions is um, how how you can lay different types of waterways. So there's different ways of doing it. So the first way I'm going to talk about is the um, the the loft way of doing it. So the same way you would do track. So I've got Soldier Summit enabled, which um, gives me these two assets, and I've got Kuju assets, the old rail simulator assets, which give me some different um, ones. And some routes contain these, some routes don't. Uh, for example, in the Academy assets, there are none of these. But it's in this one here marked Water. So let's have a look at SS Water River. Now you'll see you've got the... Same as railing any lofts like fences, you've got the yellow track, you've got the yellow, press and hold, move down, and then lay the um, lay that and click and there you go. That is your first bit of water. Now unfortunately because it's laid it right close to the ground actually you, it's rounding. The rounding means it's going to move that. What you can do is just move that up a little bit. There you go. And then that's going to be fine. So that's that's a really simple form of water and again if you want to carry that on you can just carry on. It's just the same way you'd lay any other uh, any other assets. I need to there you go. And it will just join them up for you. Another thing you can do, let me just run this so you can see the water. You'll see the water is actually moving. So you see the water is actually moving slowly. So if I go back into the editor and I switch to the height tool uh, and I pick up that and I move that up. So essentially what we've got here is a kind of a V, uh, a sort of an, a triangle shape, very very subtly. Uh, with this being the pivot, if I now run the route, what you'll find is that here it's running that way, and over here it's running that way because it always follows gravity. If you find the middle, you can actually see it sort of acting a little bit strange because there you go, look, you can see where the water is actually running in different directions. So by putting your water on um, a uh, on an angle, you'll see that it will actually flow correctly. Um, so that's a very simple, uh, that's one way of doing the water asset. Um, you've also got um, in here, let's say for example, you've got water canal. Again, the same process. So you can lay your canals uh, and again the water will just follow the, um, the flow. So if we lift this up. And then we run it. You can see it's just gently moving down. And then over here, unfortunately I, I clicked it and moved it before. So it's all falling down to that hole. <laughs> but you can see that uh, the water moves, the, uh, moves into there. So that's kind of the canal way of doing things. There's a number of options that you've got for doing water in that way. The other way you can do water is to uh, lower the ground. Uh, let me make a larger area. Uh, let me do that and then move this water down. So I'm going to move this. It's difficult to see at the moment, but it will all become clear. Um, so I've just lowered that down. So if you look, I've just lowered this terrain down here. So what I'm going to do now is go into this one. So back in the scenery, uh, scenery tools into this one that says uh, foliage slash water. And at the bottom you've got water, lake, reflective or pond, non-reflective. So if I do lake, you get it's basically just a decal. So if I click that and drop it and then get rid of it again, you can see you've got this water effect. And what you can do is you can just grab it and make it bigger. So if I get hold of that, push it to one side. Uh, and I get hold of that and push it to one side. And the same with that. I can now move it up and down a bit and find out where I want to put that to make it slightly more refined. There you go. So that is a uh, reflective lake. You can then build over it and it will reflect correctly. You can do the pond thing, uh, they use the pond asset exactly the same way. Um, and that's basically how you build bodies of water. Uh, the other thing you could use this for actually is if you wanted to have a um, you could do canals effectively this way, it's a little bit harder but you might prefer the effect so if we were to um, narrow our tool down to say 25 uh, and 
just bring this across here you know we can we can we can start extending the water across and um if you go back to the scenario tool and select the decal, you can see the decal goes to here. There's nothing to stop you then putting another decal uh, and then and aligning that one on. So if we take that one and uh, get another water reflective decal and stick that there, I can then make that decal bigger. I can then rotate that decal around and then have it so that it just follows where I want it to go and then the trick is just to get it at the same height now there's probably an easy way of doing it but I'm not a root builder this is why I don't do root building tutorials properly because I'm not a root builder people get very worried when I do root building tutorials that'll do it's close enough for me anyway not for anybody else but it's close enough for me so we put that in there and then we carry on dropping this terrain down and you can see that the water carrier appears to carry on and if we come down here um, other than the fact that the water is disappearing um, you can see that we've got this this water body coming across here so that's another way that you can make the uh, the water on, uh, go on there now related to water the other thing that you can do under roads at the bottom is vehicle paths now again this depends on whether they, the the um, routes that you've got ticked and have these assets but you've got for example the speedboat so let us start the speedboat uh, here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay a straight bit and then I'm going to get hold of it lift it up a bit I'm going to move it, put it where I want it. It's a bit awkward if you do if you try and do it on the water because it it, it sort of wants to disappear um, under the water, and then it gets very difficult to do anything with it. So if we put that here, you can see we're already underwater. Move it up. There you go. So that we're just on top. Right now, I can't remember which way we turned it round. So let's just run it and find out what happens. There he goes. So you can get your speedboat and you can have him running across there. Well, that's fortunate because that means we can now extend it. So let's uh, run the road. Uh, we'll get the speedboat there. We join it on. Again, this is just like track. This really is just like track. We'll turn that so that it comes around there. And then we will bring him so that he does a sharp right turn up here. And then he can do a turn along there. and a turn around there and a turn around there, that's close enough for me uh, and then we'll run that and this is where it doesn't work right here he goes not really very speedboaty but is he flying or is he in the water? Well, he's in the water mostly so by raising and lowering that you can get that to uh, stick in to, to sort of get him submerged or up or down or anything. Someone's asked, would that make it into a sub boat? Yes it would. Yeah you can uh, you can sink your boat as well if you want. <laughs> so you can see he's following that path and he's turning around and he's doing what we've asked him to do. So if we now um just um you can use the height tool because again this is just no different to anything else. So if we were to um, go over in front of the the boat here uh, and have a bit of fun with him because he looks like he needs to have some fun uh, and we uh, create a height point there uh, and then we mm. sink it um, and then we run it what you'll find is uh, apparently that I've I've lowered the whole thing I would do because I didn't create a height point before there so we've we've sunk him underwater underwater and he'll come up in a minute hopefully. <laughs> I don't know if I put any other height points in. I think I've just lowered the whole thing. So let's, uh, we can do that. Just real quick, just to make it work. So what I want to do is go in 
front of the boat. There he is there. So we'll put one there. We'll raise that back up. Here he comes. So that boat will go exactly where you tell it to and follow the path. Uh, you can kind of have some good fun with that actually. Um, you can also put, there's a narrow boat, there's an airliner, there's all sorts of things that you can put down and I think other people have um, uh, have done other things as well. So that's pretty much I think what I wanted to cover with regards to waterways. Um, flying boat, you could certainly do a flying boat. What you could do is you could put an asset of like a ramp in and then you could have the boat go over the ramp. Um, so for example uh, you could put a... Um, there's this other block actually which is quite useful. Um, is it in here? I can't remember where it is. <sighs> textured block. So textured block is really clever. Um, and you can, as if you're a make your own content, you can make your own textured blocks. But what you can do with these is um, you can get hold of them and stretch them and make them different sizes. So if you're wanting to, you can block out areas on a route. If you don't have the asset for it yet, you can block the asset out uh, by just putting these texture blocks in, putting them in the right size. So there's no reason why you can't put something in, for example, here. And uh, put something like that. And then we'll go back to this. Uh, we need to have a look at our our road, our path. So that's going to come around there. So we really need to move that over. And then come back here. So he's going to hit this point here. Then he wants to hit this point here. And then he wants to hit, let's say, that point there. All we want to do is move that up to the top of there, um, and then maybe put another point in here and move it to about there. And maybe actually, what we'll do is we'll put another point there and move that slightly down. There you go. Right. A little bit of silliness before we move on. So what happened now is that the boat will carry on on its journey until it finishes, and then it will start again, and then we'll see silliness. Come on, start again. Right. Now let's see what happens. Here he comes. Walking down the street. Oh, he's sinking. He's <laughs> sinking. Get back out of the water. Up he goes, boom, and then he comes back and sings. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, that's silly fun. Okay, right, never mind. That's that's enough of that silliness, I think. Um, I think that was all I needed to cover for water and anything. So I've just covered um, turntables, asset blocks, and uh, waterways. So if anyone has anything they um, they think uh, that I want to cover in addition to that, then um, by all means drop me a note and. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we'll see what uh, and, I'll, and I'll maybe I can come back and have another go another time see what we think <laughs> uh, paint the water someone said yeah you can come into the paint tool here and I believe there's a isn't there a water in here I don't know it depends what textures you've got and see whether or not you've actually got no I don't think I've got a water one in here that I can paint with but there's all sorts of things we can do terrain texturing another time Okay, right, I think it's time to move on to our next scenario. Can you change the paintbrush size? Yes, down here in the bottom left. As with all of the tools, this one here is the size of the tool, uh, and then the right hand one is the um, how fast the tool works essentially, uh, and then the um, uh, the middle one is um, the 
graduate, yeah, the fall off. So essentially the brush effect. Oh, I'm waving my hands in front of the camera. Um, the uh, the brush effect um, sort of it has whether it's got a, a hard boundary or whether it falls off gently to the outside. In most cases, you want that to be quite gentle. Um, but um, yeah, so it's it's the uh, this this is the size of the brush. This is the um, speed the brush it takes effect. So I'll just do that real quick. Um, so over here, if we've got a brush of 25, if I pick sand and I draw the sand, you can see it's filling in that area there. If I change uh, that to 100 and then draw it, you can see that it draws a much bigger area. And you can see it drew it quite quickly, and that's because I've got that. If I set that to, say, 0 0.1 and then click, you can see it would... That did actually go slower, trust me. Um, let's set that to 0 0.01. There you go. Now it's going really, really slow. You can see it just about happening. And then it grows, and it adds more to it. And you can sit there, so you can add more to it. So 0 0.05. Um, actually, let's make that 0 .0, uh, 0 0.1. And then over here, you've got the brush fall off, which is one. So if I set that to 0 0.2, and then I put that one in there, it's. I think it's fairly safe to say I'm not very good with the uh, with the terrain texturing tool. Actually, it's. Uh, but yes, if you want to paint large areas, you can easily paint large areas. That's about what I'm good at: splotching. <laughs> Um Right. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next scenario now, which is sorting the goods by Darkness Monster. Uh let's get that one sorted. I hope that's been useful for everybody. Um and like I said, if you've got anything else you think I should cover on these tutorials, then do let me know. Right. So,